down to 10 minute quarters and a running clock. And we have been told each team will get one trick play per quarter. So look out for that. So Team Orange will be the number one offense led by Ellinger. Gives it to Keontae Ingram who goes right side. And is quickly brought down by B.J. Foster, who had a lot of those tackles near the line a season ago. So Ellinger, 25 through the air, 16 on the ground. Most rushing touchdowns by a Texas quarterback all time. Now, the white defense, that will be the number one defense that has a lot of holes to fill. Eight starters lost from a year ago. And in back-to-back -back years, Todd Orlando perhaps replacing the best player at every level of the defense as that ball was intended for Malcolm Epps, broken up by Jalen Green. So new corners, Boyd, Davis, gone. i tell you what, I really like these young guys. When you start talking about their skill set, and Jalen Green is a thumper now. I mean, he's, he's old school. You know, you, when you start watching him play in the way he's aggressive and assertive on that edge, you start to think you start to think of names like Bryant Westbrook and Quentin Jammer and, and guys that'll come up and smack you in the face. And um, he's long. They're they're inexperienced corners, but they're they're going to begin some great wide receivers, and that'll help develop their game. Third and long. Good luck against the tight Orlando defense. Let's see if they keep it vanilla here in the spring game. Ellinger looking to his right overthrows Malcolm Epps, and that was Jalen Green once again in coverage. Show a three and out for the number one offense. That brings us to the impact players brought to you by Nissan. Yeah, it, out of camp, you've heard Chris Brown's name. This this young man was a special teams demon last year. He's now emerging as a guy that can be in one of those safety spots and is going to have some impact minutes. Malcolm Roach will be the guy along the defensive line. Can he be the, the third defensive lineman in the year to win the defensive lineman of the year award? Samuel Cosme has shored up that left tackle position. He's a man amongst boys. And Keontae Ingram has certainly proven now that this is his backfield. Along with Jordan Winnington, they're going to provide an excellent duo for this Texas team to anchor um, down their running game. And um, I'm looking forward to watching these two guys get out here today and, and put on some moves. Would you say more question marks for the defense than the offense? It's not even close. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think the biggest question mark for me, Lawt, is the leadership. It, when you lose guys like Gary Johnson and Charles Minho and Brecken Hager, these guys were the heartbeat of your team. And, you know, the one thing that I will say, though, is Todd Orlando and Tom Herman both have have done a great job of producing leaders on that side of the ball. If they can continue to do that, and some of these guys who aren't necessarily vocal can step up into that role, take charge of that side of the ball, then I think Texas has a chance to, to really win a Big 12 title. And this is big. It is Casey Thompson leading the white offense. This will be the number two offense, and Thompson figures to be the guy backing up Ellinger. So a quick pass, and the number two defense swarming. Kai Jarman as Mason Ramirez brings him down. So Casey Thompson redshirted a year ago. Tom Herman says that he is ahead of where he expected a redshirt freshman to be at this point in time. And a give to Danny Young. And after getting back to the original line of scrimmage, Luke Brockemeyer, oh, the yeah. son of the Texas legend, Blake brings him down for the tackle. Last from the pass there. And, and you know, you, you, you talked about the, the second unit and, and uh, what, what both of these teams are looking for. But this is the bulk of your, your special teams players as well. So when you start to look at these two guys, today could be a difference in you really establishing yourself as being a guy to get the first shot when the ball rolls around to being one of those impact players on special teams because this is where you win your job. So we're looking at third and about seven here for young Casey Thompson. Quick pressure, but nice ball delivered on the spot to Alvante Woodard. Kobe Boyce forces him out. That's a big throw for the redshirt freshman. 100%. And he had guys in his face when he did it, Lowell, and that's, that's a tough play to make. And it was thrown in the right location, safe location, beautiful pass. Bad snap. Thompson will keep. And this is what he's also going to bring to the table. Now, anytime there's contact on the quarterback in the spring game, they will call him down. But Thompson can scoot, albeit he's a different type of runner than Sam Ellinger. He's elusive. And, and he's his, that slender build that he has really allows him to get into some creases. At 6'1", 190, he's not a big guy. But he's hard to hit, and he's hard to spot up. He's hard to target from distance, and, and that's going to help him. Um, what, what he'll have to learn how to do is to when to when to pull that trigger. And that's for every dual threat quarterback. When's the right time to run? When's the right time to sit back and pick a defense apart with your arm?
And he will be needed for this Texas offense this season. As that's a design run right side, and there is some of that quick burst. Yeah, that's just, that's smooth. I mean, you know, you said a design run. They get some blockers out in front. Excellent job. The offensive line selling off their guys. And you see them there following those blockers. Great vision. And if you're the Texas staff, this is why you may be able to play this guy in some limited situations and find a package for him. 16 yards on the key. This is a dunk, and it will be picked up. Kobe Bush with the IT cops it up. But it goes down. So the first turnover of the 2019 spring game, Kobe Boyce, who could be a factor in the cornerback conversation, even though he's on the number two defense as it stands right now, plays like this is how you get Todd Orlando's attention. Texas football on Longhorn Network is presented by Living Spaces. Buy it today. Enjoy it tonight. And in part by Toyota. Save big on Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event. Visit buyatoyota.com. Coors Light is cold filtered. For brightness and clarity, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Light. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to virtually eliminate your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-960-2344. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we can save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk. Credit Associates. Live better, debt free. Find out how easy it is by calling now. For the secret the credit card companies don't want you to know, call Credit Associates now and see how much money you could save for free. Call 1-800-960-2344. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. You're watching the Longhorn Network. Hook them horns. Welcome back to the 2019 Texas football orange and white spring game presented by Living Spaces. Well, we talked to Malcolm Roach a couple days ago, and after seeing Jordan Whittington for the first time, he wants to know what are they feeding people <laughs> down in Cuero, Texas? Because Whittington has shown up, still should be in high school, does not look like it. Well, and you see him running with the runs here. I, I mean, the report out of camp is that this kid came in and he's had the same maturity as the guy like Connor Williams, who we knew was going to play uh, week one. He's going to get significant reps, 10 to 15 snaps, I'd say touches, I I'll say, uh, week one for sure. Um, he's made an impact on the team. And what I love hearing is the way his teammates respect him. And you want a young, humble guy like that to come in who's going to get those kind of reps. Worthington gets the carry, going right side, slips through one tackle for a gain of four. And what's what's special about him is that, you know, I asked Tom, I said, well, what made y'all move him back to running back? And he said, well, when we saw him run the Wildcat package, it made us believe that he could play that position. But in high school, this kid played all over the field. Ellinger to throw. Pressure. McCulloch is there. Here comes Malcolm Roach. And Ellinger steps out, I believe, before getting rid of the football. So that's going to be a loss. And a big one at that, a loss of 12 by Ellinger. Hey, you, you get some guys here around his feet and you know the one thing that I, that I thought Sam did a great job of last year was was extending plays and whether it be he you know shrugging off a defensive lineman or a linebacker and then he made some very wise decisions. He protects the football. We all know that this young man um, was as sharp as you can be in terms of turning it over to the other team. 
And this is something that's very important to him. This is not, he won't be happy with that play. That's his spring game play. Ellinger does not make that if it's the regular season. And this is why they love Whittington as well. Top of your screen, and that's not just a decoy. He was a receiver in high school as well. They love his pass catching ability. So empty backfield, five receivers for Ellinger. Four man rush by the defense. Ellinger. Nearly picked off as he was looking for Cade Brewer. B.J. Foster dropping back in the coverage. So back-to-back -back three and outs for the number one offense. That's a good sign, though, for this defense. Because in the last scrimmage that they had, the defense got lit up. They got whipped. And, and we asked Malcolm Roach what happened. And he said it was the first time that he's ever seen Tom Herman actually come into a meeting and, and actually challenge the entire group, but particularly the defensive line. And... Um, if you're Todd Orlando, you, you saw it there. He did a little sugar blitz there where he brought up a bunch of guys around the line of scrimmage and only rushed four. That's what makes this defense so confusing. That's what makes him one of the best in the country. If you're a quarterback, you have to think through the play. You have to think through what's coming next, the snap, and everything else. And that's what you love about Todd Orlando. This defense will continue to grow. They're still looking for some leadership low, but I think they'll be fine. The start of the Mike White era. That is the free taco sign. That ball is smashed. This is hit a ton. Goodbye, home run. The starting pitching has been outstanding. A big strikeout for Henley. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working, and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. After earning a degree in aerospace engineering, she joined the U.S. Air Force in 1992. When the military ended restrictions on women flying in combat, she became the first to take advantage. And I said, well, I don't want the attention, but I want to fly fighters more than anything. With over 3,000 flight hours, she became a Brigadier General and the first woman to command the 57th Wing of the Air Force. Jeannie Levitt. She's a Longhorn legend. Welcome back to Austin. Orange, white spring game. Lowell Galindo here with Ahmad Brooks. Ludacris performing after the game. Oh, my man. Luda. You know what was great? Tom said, we asked Tom, why why Luda? He said, because that's a little bit of old school. He feels like he could cut a rug during that. Cut and then the rug. young guys, you know, still can relate to Luda. Luda, a uh, fine artist, now an actor. He's done, he's done so many things. He's had a wonderful career, both on and off the mic. Great to see Kirk Johnson in the backfield Indeed. for the white offense, the first spring that Kirk Johnson has been healthy for. And he has been tearing it up as this is a much improved backfield. Johnson gets the carry, showing patience. And he's brought down after a short gain. Russell Hind was there. Jacoby Jones as well. Now we talked to Colin Johnson about his decision to come back. And what's been lost in that decision is the opportunity to play with his older brother, Kirk, and to go through everything together for the final time. They've played on the field for one snap together in their careers at Texas. And Colin said that was one of the highlights of his career. It was a special teams play, but they were together. Thompson tries to dump it down to Johnson, and it's batted down at the line. So Colin coming back, he had his knee cleaned up. That's why he hasn't been a go in the spring, but he will be fully cleared essentially once this spring game comes to an end. He's gonna be a force. I mean, I really thought that his confidence grew towards the latter part of last year, and 
Lou Jordan Humphrey, no question about it, in my opinion, was the go-to guy. And I think he was the, the playmaker for them on the outside edge. And it wasn't that Colin wasn't capable. I just felt like Lou Jordan Humphrey took that role over. This is Colin's year. I, I think this kid is set to have, you know, 10 to 15 touchdowns, make some big impact plays, and, and really help this offense on the outside edge be dominant. Who's going to be the running mate with no Lou Jordan Humphrey? Thompson takes off. Thompson's got first down yardage. And that's the second first down run for Casey Thompson. Quick twitch athlete. Did you see how quick that decision was to run? And it was the right one. When the hole opens up like that and you can get first down yardage, I guarantee you Tom's telling him, you take that every time. And, you know, that thing opened up like the Red Sea. It was easy for him to, to get through there. And, and that's, that's, that's a good decision from a young quarterback. To Kirk Johnson, working the middle. And the run defense for both sides has been stout as Jacoby Jones, the JUCO transfer, is there to make the stop. One of the top rated JUCO defensive linemen in America out of Butler Community College. Jacoby Jones, 36 in orange. They're going to need some new bodies. There's going to be opportunity for a lot of guys when you consider Hager, Nelson, Aminahu all gone. That is your starting defensive line. Yeah. And, and Jones is an excellent pass rusher. He'll have to continue to grow his game in terms of holding up um, against the run. Thompson on a second and seven, slings it to the former high school quarterback. And Jared Wiley out of Temple he cannot haul it in. I, I like this kid, though. He's very athletic. You know, and he's, he's got a skill set that I think is going to make him a dangerous player in the middle of the field and an option for the quarterback down the road. Um, right up the street, he was at one point coached by our own Kwame Cavill. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he's got a mean streak to him. So that's yeah. a play that you've got to – see, this is what the spring game is. He'd have made that play in practice, but you throw some fans into this stadium and you get those nerves get going and you drop a pass that you should have caught. He'll have to clean that up. Thompson looking for another third down conversion. The white offense has moved the chains because of his legs. Pressure, he eludes it again. Looking for first down yardage but brought down by Brockemeyer, making his second tackle of this spring game. He's been active. He's been active. He's been all over the field, and that was a great, that was a great angle he took. You know, I think because of the way that Casey's been converting plays with his feet, listen, keep everything in front, just make the tackle, finish the play. And Texas coaches have said it, and they will continue to say it. They are looking for guys who can finish plays. At the end of the day, who's going to be that guy that when your team needs you, you come through big? Four carries, 28 yards rushing for Casey Thompson. This is Ryan Buchevsky back for his sophomore year. No rush, no return. Just want to see him work on those boots. And a lot of Texas fans hoping he makes the jump going into his sophomore season like his cousin Michael Dixon did back in his great playing career here at Austin. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus, I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. The start of the Mike White era. Texas is broken this game wide open. That is the free taco sign up ball is smashed. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking a sweet and spicy bacon burger. The sweet and spicy bacon burger is my all-time favorite. I love this burger. It's just perfect. Two beef patties, two different types of cheese, caramelized onions. My favorite thing about this burger is the sweet and spicy pepper sauce and the bacon. <laughs> you get it in every bite. Nothing beats this. The sweet and spicy bacon burger is an all-time favorite at Whataburger. That's happiness. <laughs> The perfect table is a reflection of your individual style and needs.
needs. That's why Louis Shanks offers an infinite selection of fine home furnishings in every style. Visit our new Reflections Custom Design Center where pieces can be designed to perfectly fit you. Or partner with one of our experienced designers to help make your dream home a reality. Room by room or one piece at a time. Louis Shanks Furniture. We live to help you love where you live. A lot of new faces. Their style of play, with the success that Coach Herman has had with dual threat quarterbacks, I feel like he could utilize me and provide me with a lot of opportunity. Until I got here, I didn't really understand like the gravity of, of what it meant to be a Longhorn, but it's an honor. Just being here, I know I've got a lot to uphold and a big name to wear across the front. It's just a lot of pride and just rich tradition that you have to uphold when you come here. Back-to-back -back top five recruiting classes for Tom Herman, and there is the coup of this year's freshman class, Brew McCoy. Technically signed with USC in the early signing period, Cliff Kingsbury leaves to become the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. McCoy decides to transfer, gets here in time for spring practice, and McCoy gets it. This is where he is so good. After the catch, it has the coaching staff salivating about his potential. But since McCoy technically is a transfer, there is a waiver process that is playing out as we speak that will determine whether McCoy will be eligible for next season. The sign looks good. The signs look good because of, you know, Tate Martell, who transferred from Ohio State to Miami as Sam picks up the first down yardage there. And, and it, it looks good. And, and I tell you what I really love about McCoy is his size. And you talk, we talked about Jordan Whittington as well. At 6'3", 215, the kid's ready to play right now. Yeah. And now it's just about mentality. And uh, he's a hard worker. We, we confirmed that yesterday through Tom. And Tom said, this is a guy that's going to go out and he's, he's going to work to be great. Elliger picked off. McCulloch, house call. No, brought down short. 31 yards on the INT return by Jeffrey McCulloch. He was thinking pick six, so was I. He's starting to show a knack for this. Do you remember the Kansas game? Oh, yeah. He robbed one just like this. He falls right underneath coverage, and he's doing a good job of holding himself off. I tell you what, I mean, that's exactly where you need to be. As a linebacker, it almost like he had eyes in the back of his head. Do you see how he just flowed with the running back? And, you know, and there was a our, our team at Longhorn Network did an excellent job of the the all access piece. And they were actually talking to Ingram and some of the other players. And and Sam was talking about that in particular route when you when you're in zone coverage on how you have to shorten that thing and get out there a little bit quicker. He was expecting him to be underneath and Ingram was over the top. And when you're a quarterback, you're just throwing on memory. You know, you're throwing on memory. And so that was a poor pass, but it was an excellent play from McCulloch to get right underneath and really starting to show a knack for being able to rob those types of plays. In the words of Todd Orlando, the Texas defense needs McCulloch to play at an elite level. Yeah, he's Ooh. in the middle. He's in that spot. Here is Thompson for the one. Bad snap, the feed. And Daniel Young brought down for the loss. So right now, we're seeing some poor snaps by Rafidi Germay, but there's a reason behind this. The dude has never done this before. And this is such a challenge. You know, it's like a no-look pass every time. Yeah. And, and you know, and you, you have to get used to it, and it's it's all muscle memory. And though I've never done it, I had to play quarterback, and I, and I know this, and once again, those are low. But you know what that's telling me? It's consistent. So here's the thing. You go back and you watch this on film, and the coaches are going to tell him, they're going to sit him down and say, hey, here's what we're doing. More than likely, he's not all the way coming through with his snap. Yeah. And when you see those short snaps, it's, it's one thing to do it in practice. It's another thing when you've got somebody breathing down your neck, getting ready to push you down, shoot through your gap. And But I really like this kid, and the fact that they have confidence in to move him inside tells me that he can do it. Thompson on the sweep, slicing through, but a big hit right at the goal line by DeMarvion Overshown. Wow. He will do that. But I don't know if they want that on the quarterback. <laughs> Well, and this is how he's made a name for himself all spring. You know, he's just been really striking a blow. And, you know, and this is a young kid with tremendous talent back there. Could have played multiple positions. I mean, that's just running through. With the, that's running through the ball carrier. That's a big-time hit. And, uh, Regular nice season, there. that's probably a review and a touchdown. But it's the spring game. Thompson in trouble. Wiggling his way out and finding the end zone. Casey Thompson, a little Houdini. 
Yeah, that's that slender bill. You know, just bowing that shoulder. He's, he's, he's very slender. I mean, you know, he's paper thin. And, you know, it's, like I said, it's just not a lot of hit. You're in the right position here. You've got an opportunity to really seal that out, and you can't. You know, this is good footwork, too, in the back. Once again, a poor snap. They couldn't get into his RPO package, but this is great creativity, and this is something that this young man has shown in his high school career, and the coaches are hoping that he can do that the exact same thing here on the 48. And Cameron Dicker on for the first time for the extra point. The hold by Bruchevsky is there, and it's 7-0 white. It was almost like that poor snap helped Thompson with the helter-skelter nature of that play. And look, when it comes to those feeds, the snaps from Gurmat, and the coaching staff told us, if this is the regular season, he's probably not the number two center, but this is the spring. This is the spring, so they've got to get him in, t in place and start working on that development. Yeah, I mean, and, and here's the thing. What, you, what you've got to do now is... Zach Shackelford is, he's the big boy on this group now. You know, now what you've got to do is, during the summer, I'm going to have his number on speed dot. <laughs> and I'm going to yep. have him up here constantly, day in, day out. We're going to be getting in work. And the one thing that we heard about Shaq this week is that he has no problem <laughs> being that guy on the team that challenges teammates, yeah, uh, get in their face, confront them. And here's what he's going to have to do with a player that they may need. Because, listen, at some point, you're going to suffer an injury. You don't know where it's going to happen. You don't know how to plan for it, but it will happen. And you're going to need everybody to be on the same page. And so we know that this kid's capable. I, I, the coaching staff would not have moved him there. Yeah. So now it's a confidence thing. And I remember as a cornerback, when sometimes when I, you know, you're going through one of those slumps, low, you feel like the whole world's coming down on you. you know? And so you, you see consecutive bad snaps. He's thinking about it now. And it's, right now, he's in his own head. Ellinger back out to work, swings it to Joshua Moore. He has twitch and gains about four. So the way they describe Joshua Moore, he's the cheetah when it comes to the Texas <laughs> receiving core. They call Malcolm Epps, big number 85, the giraffe. Well, of course you would when, when he's 6'6", 245 pounds. Uh, that's just amazing. And then, and then Moore here, I think, is is a guy that I think is going to give some people some fits in, in, in the, as the slot wide receiver. So last drive for Ellinger, the number one offense. It was an interception to McCulloch as Cade Brewer, the guilty party here. Five yard penalty, second down. They really have not been moving the ball efficiently. Oh, they're it's not in sync. Going I mean, no, let's just say it. They're not in sync. And this is not what this first offense was looking for. And despite the poor performance, Today, I'm telling you right now, this group has really been um, outstanding. They've been stellar, whether it be on, uh, in the, with the enhanced run game, whether it be Sam Ellinger making excellent decisions. Uh, this group has really taken it to the defense for most of the spring. Oh, Whittington is crushed. Jalen Green says, remember my name. Now, I said it earlier, and, and, I, and you know, I'm, a, I'm a former defensive back here, so when I say the word Bryant Westbrook and Quentin Jammer, you know, I mean something. And I told you early on on the first tackle this kid made, he has no problem running through you like water. This kid is for real. He's a punisher. But that same aggression sometimes gets him in trouble because sometimes he wants to come up and make those big plays, and that's where he'll have to continue um, to monitor his game. But i tell you one thing he's not. He ain't scared. <laughs> Todd Orlando loves you. <laughs> he so you got scared. Green on one side. On the other side, number 17, Deshaun Jamison, who, remember, was a receiver and returner last year. Ellinger in trouble again, and it's Joseph Osai picking up the sack and a three and out forced by the Texas defense. Yeah, this is just great determination. And, and here's where the pocket broke down, right up the middle. You're getting a great push out of uh, number 99. Um, that's Keandre Coburn, who, listen, he's going to be a force. This is a young player that they're really excited about. He's big. He's a run stuffer. He's, he's hard to move in the middle. That time they're forcing Sam right into the pressure, and that resulted in a sack. So that Texas defensive line, they know they've got two spots pretty much locked down. The edges, it's going to be Malcolm Roach and Taquan Graham. Inside, we've got one of the better battles yeah, of do. camp with Gerald Wilbon and Keandre Coburn. The way that Orlando puts it is that Wilbon is the more experienced, yep. heady player. So he's using the wisdom. Coburn mm -hmm. is the guy that's enormous and is twitched up and makes some dynamic plays. So it's the, the wise old sage yeah. in Wilbon against the young buck upcomer in Keandre Coburn. 
And here's what will happen if they do it right. They'll make each other better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the one thing and that you, I was really impressed about, one dude right and Will Bond has been, he's been very generous in giving with information. You know, the best part about being at the spring game for me is seeing all the other Letterman here. And I'm, I'm sitting out there and I'm, I'm bumping to a guy like Joe Walker, who uh, we're competing for a spot. And he, this guy constantly gave me information and we're competing. It takes that type of teammate to take Texas to the top. You've got to be unselfish. Despite you might be just losing some time and you might be giving the guy who's going to take your job information But you have to be unselfish Thompson swing pass to Johnson Johnson following the block by Wiley cuts it back for about eight yards And that's what he's known for you know those quick feet right there You know and he'll burst and he'll get inside and he'll get behind something and boom He's out and that was the dynamic back that I think they were wanting here in the backfield I think Whittington has now also provided them another option, but boy is it, is it good to see him healthy when you've got three backs like that, I, I think Texas is going to have a, an easy time running the football. This will be short of the first down as Russell Hine makes the tackle on Johnson. And he potentially could do some things like a Trey Watson was able to yeah. do. Good receiver out of the backfield. He's better suited for outside runs. You know, outside runs, you want to put him in space. You want to, you want to let him utilize his vision, um, see things. It doesn't mean he can't run up the middle. But I, I think the strongest part of his game is is when he has when he has the ability to set up, up set up defenders make cuts off of blocks that's where he's most dangerous third and two for casey thompson in the number two texas offense thompson pulls it and that's two drops by jared wiley but what we're seeing again is a young guy that has inexperience at the tight end position doing it in front of a large crowd for the first time Poor technique he just takes his eyes off the football and, and, you know, sometimes you're so eager and anxious to try to make a play uh, after the catch. And, you know, when you're thinking about yards after the catch, run after the catch, listen, catch the ball. You know, and you'll watch him here. Watch his eyes. He doesn't look this ball all the way in. You see his eyes are already moving. You've got to look that thing in. He's worried about that corner coming off that edge and providing a smack. Short snap. Thompson takes it, converts the first down. Texas converted 80% of their fourth downs a year ago, second to only Army in all of the bowl subdivision. And this will bring us right down to the end of the first quarter as the final seconds tick away. So it is the white offense propelled by an interception by Jeffrey McCulloch, punctuated by the keeper from Casey Thompson. White, up of the orange, 7-0. Refrigerator, air conditioner, water heater will all die sometime. When they do, your homeowner's insurance won't cover them. Be sure your budget's protected with an American Home Shield home warranty. We help cover the cost to repair or replace components of your systems and appliances, no matter their age. Limitations and exclusions apply. Home systems and appliances will eventually die. Count on American Home Shield to get you back up and running. Oh, the air conditioner, too? Be sure your budget's protected. For free information, call 1 800 989 9672. That's 1 800 989 9672. Be sure with the shield. American Home Shield. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week. Thursday at 8 on LHN. The start of the Mike White era. Texas is broken this game wide open. That is the free taco sign up. Ball is smashed. said it many times, I'll say it again. 
That is what a defensive coordinator should look like. <laughs> He's a bad man. Todd yeah. Orlando. He's that's the sack man. face, you know? <laughs> when his defense gets that big play, he puts that mug on right now. And his defense, especially the number one unit, they have stolen the show here at the 2019 Orange and White Spring Game. Thompson on a first down. Looking for the crossing routes. Incomplete to Woodard. And Kobe Boyce, who's had a very good start to the spring game in coverage there. So let's get into this de uh, Texas defense because by the numbers, it was not great. I mean, you consider that they allowed opponents to gain 500 yards five different times, the most for a Texas defense since 1996. But when they needed to make plays, they made plays. So you can say the defense was good enough. They're hard to score on. And, and you know, and once they get really inside the red zone, this is... Thompson this was, off the back foot. Yeah, this was a defense that that figured out ways to make plays. And, and I'll tell you what, the, the, the beautiful part about Todd Orlando's defense, and I've been covering this defense since before he got here, is the confusion it creates. See, so many times offenses want to dictate the tone and the pace of play. Todd Orlando's like, uh-uh, you're not doing that to me and my guys. He will, he will send blitzes of various packages. He changes personnel. He mixes them around. And I thought what, one thing that was really interesting, and I asked him straight up, I said, hey, Todd, what, what, you, know, you, you do a great job of innovating and creating, but you also are constantly um, making sure that you follow along your defense. You don't just keep it stale. And he said, we have to because we know teams are studying us. The legs to Casey Thompson. He will have the first down as he is forced out by Overshone. Gain of 15. For Casey Thompson, that's that's good. That's good work there, and and oftentimes what happens here is when you drop that many numbers back in coverage, it, you know this is what makes it confusing. So they're blitzing four here. Um, they they had a guy that was supposed to be on him there it, that it, it appeared to be Marcus Tillman Jr., the young linebacker, was spying on the quarterback, but he got caught up on a block, went outside instead of inside, and allowed um, him to pick up the first down. Plays like that. Who was the guy you season to go? that chased down those athletes to the Barry open Johnson, field. buddy. Yep. As Kurt Johnson goes for about nine yards. Gary Johnson, though, covered up so many miscues, mistakes, just made plays in the open field. When you look at this list, there's a lot to replace, but I'd almost put Gary Johnson number one on that list. Yeah, it, it's, it, you know, you know the play he made in Georgia where he chases the ball down. He, you talk about his heart, his effort. I really do hope that that young man sticks on a, an NFL roster, and I think he will come special teams. But the idea of this defense is to give your, your middle linebacker that type of freedom. And, and, you know, guys like, you know, I played with the great Derek Johnson, and they were just hungry for the football. I mean, you know, you had to compete to get tackles with these guys if you were on the same field with them. And, and you hope someone emerges in this Texas linebacker room like that. There's the first catch. Nearly lost the football after Jared Wiley brought it in, and this will set up the 11th play of this drive engineered by Casey Thompson. So a couple of drops, but Wiley has it figured out, and the white offense is cooking. Now they're in their tempo here. Here's where you can really make some mistakes, uh, but you can also catch the defense on their heels if you do it right. Quick pass out to Jordan Pouncey. Bouncy was looking for that corner, does not get it. Yeah, it's well defended there. You know, on this quick passing game, it really puts a lot of pressure on the perimeter players to come up, make plays, and open space. Hardest tackle to make in football is on the edges. And, you know, Texas is a team that if, if they can get more players on the inside, the slots, they've got a few more incoming players, but with guys like Drew McCoy and Whittington, you're going to really start putting pressure on the perimeter players to make plays in space against some dynamic athletes who can make you miss. The white offense, three for six on third down. Thompson has done it primarily with his legs. This will be a third and long. Thompson looking right side. He's got a man, but just past the outstretched fingertips of Alvante Woodard. Yeah, Woodard here had a step on him. It's just too much, too much banging. You know, here he's got that step over, over the top, and you'll see here on the back half of the play, if he just keeps running, this push right here, it allowed him to get back in the play. You've just got to keep running. Once you've got a step on a guy like that, you just keep going. And, uh, but I will say this, Casey Thompson read the blitz. He saw the six-man pressure coming. He knew he had to get that ball out of his hand quickly, and he did that. Cameron Dicker, first field goal attempt, and it is good. No surprise. I saw Michael Griffin 
on the way in for Texas game day. <laughs> he had his Dicker the Kicker shirt on, that man, little man, smirk man. he had bad before man. nailing the game winner against OU. 10 0 White. I've got one. Just a uh, little something I put down on paper. Running. Running. Hold the ball. Hit the hole. Defensive back. Too small. Little guy. Boom! Those are friends. Boom! Boom! Hearts breaking. Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown. Woo! Touchdown, Ricky Fay! Yeah! Woo! The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working, and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. Welcome back to the Texas spring game as you see a bunch of current NFL ball players and some guys looking to make the jump and of course the minister of culture decked out in that burnt orange leather coat that he's had now I think since the 80s and it's <laughs> looked beautiful. You got Jeremy Hills the trainer who's trained most of these guys Quandre Diggs, Shockey Brown, Charles Aminahu, Fozzie Whitaker, Brian Arakpo. The list goes on but this is one of my favorite parts coming back and seeing your guys. Uh, you form these relationships all your time here, and then you have an opportunity to check in with your guys. It's always a fun time. And that's a drop by Jordan Whittington. Struggles continuing for the number one offense as this number one Texas defense has forced three and outs. I, I can guarantee you, when, when they go in and they're interviewed, and Sam Ellinger will be put in front of the, the media, we know that. He's going to say, we just weren't in sync, and he's going to take the blame for this. Because I think early on in the game, he's the, he's the tone setter. 100% about it. He didn't just feel like he was in rhythm, and this is what happens when your guy doesn't come out and he's playing at his best. To Whittington, gets a good block by Duvernay, but it only goes for two yards. So three, three and outs forced by the number one defense. Back-to-back -back plays, Ellinger looking for Jordan Whittington. There has not been much open downfield for the number one offense. That brings us to the secondary, which should be the strength of this Texas defense. I absolutely think so. I mean, you're going to get your leaders, Caden Stearns, Brandon Jones, who aren't even out there today, but still got guys like B.J. Foster. Uh, we talked about Chris Brown, and then I think these, these young cornerbacks, when it's all said and done, are going to be hell of a ball players. Duvernay thumped, but Duvernay stays upright. Left sideline, first down yardage in the plus territory. Montrell Estelle forces him out but not until a 20-yard pitch and catch from Ellinger to Duvernay. Yeah, now here's the thing. This is, this is excellent execution. And Duvernay, who's, you know, he's, he's one of those guys who's got a real sturdy frame. He's hard to tackle. And, and if you're in the back end and you're Jamison, you can't come up and just throw that wing out there. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work at this level. And he's still young back there. He's still learning and, and gaining valuable reps. But that's the kind of play you want to see a senior make on a third down, a key clutch play, and his quarterback trust him. Ingram in the backfield. Left side, gobbled up. Malcolm Roach there. Keontre Ingram, he had a solid freshman year. I mean, it was yeah, a good absolutely. year. Some injuries kind of slowed him down. And I think that had to do with the workload. He yes. just had too much work on him, in my opinion. What puts on 10 to 15 Ooh. pounds of muscle. Man. And 
Tim Beck says he believes that he's going to make the type of jump from freshman to sophomore that Ellinger made with that jump. I know Texas fans are sure hoping. And the kid comes in with a ton of hype. And he showed some flashes last year. The one thing that I, that, that, I, that I was really impressed with this spring, he was breaking runs from distance. This Texas team didn't have a play offensively over 50 yards last year. And they need guys to be able to take it the distance. They need some dangerous players out there that can take it to the house. We know the vision is there. Malcolm Epps brought down in the open field by Jalen Green. That's one thing that was evident the first time that we saw Keontae Ingram run. He has that feel that you... Yeah. It's really tough to describe. He sees things that not every running back sees. Well, here's here's what I think. You know, sometimes when I watch him on film, his style, he's not as fast as Jamal Charles, but Jamal Charles was very patient in setting up his blocks, and then he'd, he'd squirt through. This kid's more powerful. He's not as fast, but I think he's got that same type of running style where, where if you're a defense, you're having, to, you're having to spot him up and tackle him much like you would Jamal Charles. Third and seven. Epps. Another big hit in the open field, and it's B.J. Foster again who is having a standout spring game. Now that kid that back there now, I mean, he's another one that's just not scared. And, and we talk about this loaded secondary. Foster made some plays last year. Um, you know, just he just knocked people's socks off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, 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 he likes to hit. He's very aggressive. He ran his feet through that tackle, and he just pushed back a dude who's 6'6", 245 pounds. I mean, and he made it look very easy as Texas is now back up on a third down. And here's where Sam will be judged throughout his career. Can you, can you convert on these types of situations? Taking a shot to Ingram. Ingram, no. That was McCulloch, though. McCulloch got a hand on it and just finding a way to make a play. That was a beautifully thrown ball, though. And what you'd like to see in the future is Ingram go up over McCulloch and make this play. Because your quarterback trusts you. He's coming to the one-on-one -on -one situations. He believes that this is a matchup they can win. Prove him right, but McCulloch there in perfect position, and he's really growing. And, and you know, and the, where he's growing the most is he's becoming a vocal leader. And this is what this Texas defense needs, Lowell, because he's been a guy who's been more quiet, but it's his time to shine now. You gotta open that mouth and make those types of plays. Dominic Dunn first emerged as a public figure in Hollywood as a movie producer, but it was his tireless work for Vanity Fair magazine that made him legendary. In 2011, two years after his death, Dunn's comprehensive archive, totaling more than 109 linear feet, was donated to the Dolph Briscoe Center for American History. Portions of the archive are now on display as part of an exhibit honoring the life and work of Dominic Dunn. He started to create his writer's voice, and this is, these are some examples of things that he wrote at that time when he was just getting started on a new career as a writer. He covered celebrities, he covered um, the rich and famous, the elite, everyone from Jane Fonda to Jackie Collins to Katherine Hepburn, they're all represented in his papers, but he was probably best known for his coverage of criminal cases. The coverage of criminal cases was deeply personal for him. What inspired him to become a journalist was the murder of his daughter, Dominique. His sympathy towards victims of crime was uh, very much an important part of his writing. We have all of his reporter's notebooks, all of his trial notes, all of his research files. So we have this progression of him as a writer, not just in each story, but just as an entire career. And I think it's a pretty remarkable personal collection that is very inspirational in that way. I think a big question mark is, what is his journalistic legacy? What, what is the outcome of his career? How did it really impact the news media? That's where the Briscoe Center is so important. We're gonna preserve his materials. We're going to preserve his papers. We're going to show any researcher how he came to the conclusions he did, how he constructed his stories. In terms of what impact he had on journalism, that's up to other people to interpret. But without those papers, without his own evidence of, of what he did, it's going to be really hard to assess that journalistic legacy or understand what he was about. Welcome back to the Texas spring game. Coach Herman is with me now. Coach, looking at your defense, you wanted to see some fight, some physicality, and you wanted to break in some of those younger guys. What have you seen from that side of the ball? Well, they're, they're having their, their best scrimmage uh, to date. Uh, I, I think the wind obviously has something to do with it, the, the offense, and they're loading the box, obviously trying to stop the run because the, the wind is doing a really good job helping them stop the pass. 
Yeah, it's helping my hair too. Now, offensively, you've put an emphasis on your run game, but you still want to utilize your weapons on the perimeter. What more do you want to see from that side? Well, it's going to be difficult with you know whatever this is, 30 mile an hour gusts. So um, we're going to have to run the football versus loaded boxes, and um, you know take our shots when they're there. Hopefully, the wind will die down a little bit. All right, coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Taylor, thank you so much. So we had thunderstorms in the area earlier today. Once they moved out of the area, the wind took its place, and we have seen those gusts 20 to 30 miles per hour. And Coach Herman believes that has been a factor. Thompson has been able to do a lot with his legs, and over the past two drives, he has engineered 10 total points for his team, albeit one was set up with short field because of that interception by McCulloch. We'll see if he can do it again. Empty backfield for Thompson quick pass and finds Jordan Pouncey seven yards and Pouncey is an intriguing target it looks like he's bulked up and is one season on campus and there is a lot more depth when it comes to the receiving core at UT which allowed them to move Jamison back over to def defense and play some corner it was a great decision and, and it was just great utilization of your personnel if you're Tom Harmon and the staff because you want guys that can that can do multiple things it increases their chance of playing it increases their chance of adding more depth to the team and that's exactly what happened you know the one question mark I have with this this two offense low is something that Tom Harmon has talked about uh, religiously <laughs> finding a second group of offensive line and yeah. you know just a second ago you saw a four-man rush and they were still managed or still able to get pressure on the quarterback they've got to shore up their fifth or their sixth seventh and eighth guy on the on the offensive line guys they can trust because they're going to need it and, and like we talked about earlier those injuries and yeah they, they do a great job of cross training but they need somebody to step up whether it's christian jones you know whether it's tope Made, somebody somebody has to step up and provide them another guy that they can trust they do have parker braun oh yeah the graduate uh, transfer yeah. from georgia tech coming now. in first team all <laughs> acc so he factors into a type of role like Calvin Anderson that came Indeed. from Rice. It was the starting left tackle. Not exactly sure what spot Brown will take, but you take one of those starters that we have in this game, move them down to that second team, yeah. and already your depth is looking a lot better. Fair point. And then I also think, you know, you, when, you, when you look at Samuel Cosme, he played primarily right tackle last year and now has moved over to the left tackle position. So he's a guy that you can play at either tackle position. So I think it really just depends on where you want to play him. But I, in my opinion, and I had Georgia Tech twice the last two years, this kid's a dominant player. Like yep. he, can, he, can, he can totally shut down an edge. He's very aggressive, very smart, crafty player. Um, he's going to start, in my opinion. I, I think you'd project him as a starter. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. But I, I see what you're saying with the depth. But at the end of the day, they've got to have more confidence that they can protect their quarterbacks in order for this Texas team to really thrive the way that they believe they can. That guy can be a dude I love him. right there. I Sam love him. Cosby, he's got that mean streak. We asked Malcolm Roach, who are the two dudes you wouldn't mess with as that pops out of the hands of Joshua Moore? He said it would be Sam Cosby and Taquan Graham. He yeah. said the difference is Graham is mad all the time. <laughs> but Cosby, you got to work a little bit to get him mad. But then once you do, you have to say, out, bro. chill out, bro. Like, <laughs> well, easy. You know, you know what I love about him? is he reminds me a lot of Connor Williams. I'm you know, with you, that nasty streak. He's a three-star guy, and you know, nobody gave this kid a whole lot of credit, and then he comes out here, and, and what happens is, is those kind of guys know just how to shut their mouth and work when they come in, and he did exactly that. He won his the trust of his teammates and his coaches, and he did it with hard work. Hard work and pounding people's faces in, and that's, <laughs> as an offensive lineman, man, it doesn't get any better than that, you know, and so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can develop as. I think he's going to be uh, an offensive lineman that when we look back on, we will be saying He's very versatile, he's mean, he's physical, and, and he's going to be a top draft choice at some point. Five yards from Whittington there. Third and five for the number one offense. Whittington motions out. Ellinger looking right side to Epps. That will be short of the first down. Something tells me we will see a fourth down conversion. Actually, Tom Herman has made the call that it's a first down. This is awesome. This is what you can do in the spring game when you are the head coach. Herman called the first down. Oh, and it's, it's almost time, too, to bring out some of your key starters. And, and so you want to make sure that they're just getting a rhythm. And you don't want them to go into the offseason, uh, you know, with their daubers down about not performing as, 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 as well as they would like. Whittington stays upright. McCulloch does a good job of gaining ground. 
and Chris Brown also there on the tackle. And Chris Brown is someone the coaching staff is raving about as one of the guys, maybe unexpectedly, that is taking over this Texas defense. I'll tell you what, I mean, to my understanding, he has been the unquestioned leader since Caden Stearns and Brandon Jones have been out. And, and that's good because I, I really do believe that this secondary is shaping up where they're going to be able to carry along this defensive line that's still trying to find its way by making key plays and suffocating, cover, co suffocating coverage on the back end that I think will allow them to, to grow. And they say this kid is just the spark plug. You know, he's the dude. He's the energy. He's constantly getting them going. He's constantly uh, putting his best forward. I love seeing fourth-year guys and seniors get playing time. You know what that tells me? It sends a message to the young guys like this. Stick around, stay with the process, and good things can happen. You know, I, lo I started my sophomore year, lost my job my junior year, came back, started my senior year. The point of that is, is at Texas, you always think you can transfer when things go wrong, but it's a great example to see Chris Brown getting playing time as he is as a junior. He's been around for a while, and he's, he's, he's going to log some significant minutes, I think, in the fall. Whittington for three. That's the first down yardage. I like the way Todd Orlando put it. There's going to be some healthy discussions when Stearns and Jones return. Love it. So they're not playing this game. Jones, ankle surgery. Stearns rehabbing his knee, the reason why he was a no-go in the Sugar Bowl. Josh Thompson is also out with a head injury. Another he could playmaker. be a factor yep. as well. So there's going to be some good conversations when it comes to who plays how much, especially in the secondary. First down for Ellinger, looking over the middle to Moore. Moore tries to go up and over. Foster does not work. That's outstanding time by Foster. And it's hard to be patient um, when you know the ball's coming your way. But And especially when you don't turn your head around. You watch the, the back half of this play and how he finished here. This is outstanding. And as the timing is just great. Watch it here. Now, normally you want to turn your head around, but the timing there, right? He goes up through the wide receiver's hands. Look, if you go up through their hands, it's going to be hard for them to catch the ball. Excellent technique, timing, and patience out of B.J. Foster. This young sophomore is going to grow into being a fine player here around the University of Texas. Ellinger, 8 of 16, 41 yards. Don't be too alarmed. It's the spring game. Second and 10. Ellinger to Epps, a little bump there from Jalen Green. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. If you're Epps, you can't get bited up. You can't get bodied up by, you know, a scrawny neck DB sitting at 6'1", 190 when you're 6'6", 245. Body this dude up like you're going. Now, that's just great coverage out of Jalen, and he's going to be good. But if you're Malcolm X, Sam is trying to trust you right now. He wants to throw you that ball in that situation for you to be a key player. Body him up. Use that big frame. Secure that catch. Move the chains. Something that Humphrey was so good at and yes, Colin Johnson has become an expert at as well. Ellinger steps up. Easy move. First down. Do not touch Sam Ellinger. <laughs> like, literally, don't touch him. That's just easy money, you know, and he really made some good decisions as they're getting into their tempo offense. And, and they've given him the keys to this offense. You know, the, the, the players who we spoke to said Sam has full control. You know, they give him the plays and they know when he checks something off, uh, when he audibles, that he's done, his, he's done his research, he's done his study, and they trust whatever he sees out on the field to put this team in the right play. Herman's the quarterback whisperer, has worked with some of the greats, yes. and says that Ellinger has the best grasp of what he's doing out of all the quarterbacks he's worked with. Real route. And that was almost the highlight catch that we were waiting for from Jordan Whittington. And how Joseph Osai prevents it from happening. How many of those did he make in the state championship? Game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he single-handedly, you know, won his team title. It felt like, and look at the, look at the, the guts here from Sam. He sees the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Oh, and I do wow. think this is a matchup that you could go to. That ball hits your hands. You got you to gotta secure the catch there. And Osai, another young uh, linebacker who's trying to find his way, um, create a place for himself on this defense, uh, become one of those leaders who can produce on the football field during the fall. It wasn't bad coverage, but, but he almost lost that battle to uh, a young Whittington. Ellinger will roll the pocket, come back to Brewer. That's a drop. Mm. Never was in sync on that play. Yeah, you're trying to set up that tight end a delay on the backside. And this play can be very sneaky because everything is flowing right. And, and as, a, as a former member of the secondary and being a safety here, see, everything's flowing right. And then they just peek him out. They just pop him out on the back end. And you want to get them going the opposite direction. What this is trying to do is create spacing. See how they're going to the opposite field, trying to create some space. You've got to catch that ball if you're Cade. Because here's the thing. This kid has excellent hands. He, may ha he has the best hands in the tight end room. Yeah. Can't drop that ball. 
Third and ten. Ellinger flushed. Chris Brown was there in a heartbeat. In a dominant performance from the number one defense. Lost to 12 on that sack. A day away also here. You know, it's just great pressure. And you know, he's coming off that edge. And he's the one that really forced him right back into Chris. And, you know, and if you can continue to be that type of blitzer, this, let me tell you something. Todd Orlando loves those kind of people <laughs> that can get off uh, the ball, provide pressure, you know, make that quarterback antsy, uncomfortable. And uh, dialing up those blitzes on third down is something that that man right there does as well as anyone in the country. 52-yard attempt for Cameron Dicker. It's up and good. Dicker was one of two on field goals from 50-plus. That looks good as the orange team is on the board. Dicker the kicker delivering 130 left until the half. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. The start of the Mike White era. Texas is broken this game wide right open. That hit the free taco sign. That ball is smashed. Next, come on. Who wants to get wet? Get on in there. Climb on in there. I am on today. Mm. Yes! Next. Don't be shy. Get in there. Burning daylight. Let's go. Yes! Hey, I thought the uh, fans were supposed to dunk Roger. Yeah, there was some confusion about that. Nobody wanted to tell him. Everybody's getting wet today. Everybody. Absolutely not. Who's next? Come on. Let's go. Yes! He's known as the father of the revolutionary lithium-ion battery that powers everything from laptops to cell phones to electric cars. I found my own scientific voids. I was off running from there. An emeritus professor at UT's Cockrell School of Engineering, he's pioneered battery technology that's now industry standard and in 2011 was awarded the Medal of Science by President Obama. For a lifetime of exceptional innovation, Dr. John B. Goodenough, he's a Longhorn legend. Breaking news. The Orange team has added another three points during the break. <laughs> you may be wondering why. Well, Tom Herman has elected to award the Orange team with three more points because they won the circle drill before the start of the game. The circle drill is fun. You know, it, it's it's mano y mano, as they say. And, uh, and it's an opportunity to really see who who's charged up, ready to play, and who's ready to win their battle. Looks like Casey Thompson has been charged up. Been doing a good job following the lead of the number one defense as that is a strike to Brew McCoy, the number one ranked athlete in the ESPN 300, nine yards for McCoy. As look, you can see beneath that white jersey, he's also got the orange jersey on. So they're flip-flopping him and letting McCoy play on both sides. McCoy from modern day, out in California, originally signed with USC. Thompson taking a deep shot. No one is there. And that will bring up a third and short. How's Thompson look to you? At that time there, he just missed an option route. You know, he and McCoy, and it, McCoy brought it down, sled it down on an inside cut, and he was expecting, and that's what they're communicating about right there. They're communicating about coverage, and anytime you have those, those option routes, as a quarterback, it's your responsibility to know exactly what's going on. And, and 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 even if the wide receiver is wrong, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta find him. <laughs> and so, uh, I thought he anticipated that throw well. But um, I, I thought he's done very well with his feet today. He's he's a young man still growing and developing as a passer. But uh, he looks like he's going to be a, a a very very good competent backup here to Sam Ellinger. Good second effort there for Kirk Johnson to get the first down. And let's face it, the type of abuse that Ellinger takes. Not because of the line, but the way he chooses to play the game, which Tom Herman absolutely loves. There are going to be moments where you need another quarterback. And you look back to 
what Bouchelle was able to provide last season. He came in when Ellinger left early against Baylor, and Bouchelle helps Texas get that win. I mean, well, there's going to be an opportunity at some point for Casey Thompson. Well, and especially with the, the way that this offense is very explosive, he's going to log, in my opinion, I think he's going to log some minutes where this Texas team has really pressed the gas on other teams. And he's got to come in. And as you, want, as, you want, as you prepare and learn from a guy like Sam Ellinger, who's really taking his game to the next level, if you're Thompson, you've got to be watching, you've got to be paying attention. And I believe that being the, the backup quarterback is one of the hardest jobs in all of football because at, a, at the blink of an eye, you can go from carrying around a clipboard, you know, um, handing your starter Gatorade to being the guy, right? Like to, to actually saying, okay, the team is depending on me to get them in the right place, to do this, to do that. And for a young player, the one thing that he's got to do a good job of is getting mental reps. Mental reps are when you're at practice, constantly put yourself in action, ask questions to Tim Beck, ask questions to Sam Ellinger, and be just a gym rat. Be a guy that constantly is watching film. That's how you win over your teammates, but that's also how you prepare yourself in the, in the, in the blink of an eye to be ready to contribute to this team. And also get him some game reps. Oh, he the, will. The Definitely. point being, though, last season, if he would have been the backup, they would have had no opportunity to break them in. Fair enough. Because 10 of the 14 games were decided by close. single digits. They were close. And, and you're not going to pull sound yeah. at that point. So, so you're absolutely so right. So get some blowouts. You need those. Those are to good. To get Thompson ready. Great for confidence as well. Second and eight. 56 seconds left until the break. It will be a short halftime. And then a running clock in the second. Thompson was looking McCoy's way. Will keep the play alive and just heave it downfield and throw it away. That's a good decision there. You know, and anytime you're moving to your left and your right-handed quarterback, setting up those feet, making sure you can adjust. And what you didn't do is that you didn't take you didn't take a loss here. Now, so now you're back up a third down. It's still a third and long situation. Um, and I, every quarterback is judged on, on how you get your team and how you manage your team in these types of situations. He's a young player. It's a lot of young players out here on the field. Will they be able to find a way uh, to convert here? This is where the staff is sitting back and, and saying, who can we depend on come the fall where we can throw them out there and we know they're going to be dependable. Now let's point this out. The snaps have gotten better by Germain. Hit as he throws a contested catch is made by Pouncey. First down on a third and eight. That's a big time ball right there. I'm telling you now. You got pressure in your face. Hard to throw there. You have nowhere to really step up. And he slings this thing in. You know, and, and it's on the money. And it's a big contested catch there. You know, he threw him, he threw him away from, from uh, where the danger was at. Excellent throw. Again, over the middle, looking for Pouncey. Incomplete. I'm not sure why Pouncey stopped his route here. And it looks like he's a little banged up as he's slow to get up. But he cut off his route. You know, and... and, and, and Thompson was expecting him to run through that route, and for some odd reason, he set it down. You'll see the back half of this, rap, this route, he just shut it down. And that's what allowed him, the ball, to be just, just out of his grasp there. But um, these are all young players that are gaining valuable reps in front of the fans here. It's been an excellent turnout, and it turned out to be a pretty beautiful day out here for Texas fans. And I know if you want to really see Lowell cut, bust a move, he'll be over there at the Luda, probably backstage. Probably on I'm, stage uh, as a I, backup that's, dancer. That's you right there. That that's is you. such a thing at a ludicrous <laughs> concert. Shot to Brew McCoy. McCoy was trying to go one hand. Can't haul it in. Kobe Boyce in coverage. I like the confidence here from Thompson. I mean, he knew where he was going with this football immediately. He saw one on one. He recognized coverage. And he goes to his guy, Brew McCoy, who's such a dynamic playmaker at the high school level and who many of us believe is going to project to be that same guy here at the University of Texas. And um, that's a play where if you're, you're McCoy, just keep running through it. You know, he set him up well at the move, at the, at, the, at the line of scrimmage. Once you've gotten behind him and you stack that guy, take off. And it's your quarterback's responsibility to make sure he can, he can throw the football to you. Third and 10, Thompson off the back foot, has Pouncey, but cannot connect. That will force a fourth down. Yeah, just trying to look for that corner out here. And he has certainly created some separation there on the outside edge on uh, the safety. And the ball just wasn't thrown in a safe location. But I also think, too, when, when you've got guys in your face all day, you know, that quarterback's clock starts ticking. And sometimes you, you, you'll throw a ball when you think you don't have enough time. And that's not necessarily the best idea is 
Are they setting up for a field goal here? I, are they going for a 60 yard? I'm loving it. Every bit of it. Let's try it. Let's go, Cameron Dicker. Why not? Well, well this kid has, he's got a boomstick now. I mean, and, um, he'll be he'll be the next great great kicker to come out of the University of Texas. He's he certainly has ice in his veins. 60 yard attempt, of course, no pressure, no block, but just test it off the leg. Why not spring game? Dicker. No. Wide right. But hey, he's trying to get that win. You know, get up under that win. That'd have been a big time play. And that was into the win for Cameron Dicker. 60 yards. And it wasn't a great hole, you know, and that, that's part of it too. It, you know, and that messes up your rhythm. Um, that's part of it. And you need, you need, you need to be, to make sure that you are kicking through the ball um, if you're going to take a 60 yard attempt. But it, at some point, if the coaches are doing that, he's made one in practice or something to give them that type of confidence. And they're going to call this halftime. So 13 was on the clock. It's spring game. We'll go to the break. Cameron Dicker does have himself a field goal. Thompson with the touchdown run, and it is Team White with the 10 to 6 lead, 12 to 6, excuse me, over the Orange. to reaching goals or realizing dreams we're here to help you gain the confidence you'll need to succeed UFCU invest in yourself the eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great Longhorn Extra this week Thursday at 8 on LHN. Go ready? Let's do this. Pull! Pull! Oh. <laughs> that is a nice suit, Colt. <laughs> I ship you up now. Huh? Pull! Shipley! Should be all right. The start of the Mike White era. Texas is broken this game wide open. That hit the free taco sign up. Ball is smashed. Welcome back to the 2019 Texas football orange and white spring game presented by Living Spaces. Moments ago, the Sugar Bowl championship trophy hoisted once again. Hager and Minahu Rodriguez, some of the standouts and the captains of that Texas team with the victory over Georgia in Nolens. All access takes us back to that monumental win. From the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, it's the Texas Longhorns against the Georgia Bulldogs in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Oh, 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 my Lord! Hey, people, 15, man. You got some edge to him. Did we outrun him and did we outhit him? Did we out-execute him? That's going to be the difference between winning and losing that game. This is our time. It's the time for us. And for you seniors, you will never put on the burnt orange and white again. Ever. So what do you have to lose? We're happy you joined us from here in New Orleans. And the All-State Sugar Bowl is underway. 
Ellinger, the snap, here running himself to the goal line. Touchdown, Texas. Sam Ellinger takes it across. The Longhorns take the opening kickoff and march it 75 yards right at the Bulldogs. They're breathing heavy. We've got to keep going. I can't keep up with that pace. Well, the Longhorns go up 10. Up from the shotgun with the snap turns, hands the ball off to Swift. Upfield 15 17, ball loose. It's on the turf. Longhorns have it. Texas has come up with it. All the way till midnight. All the way till midnight. Step on. Fourth and goal for Texas inside the Georgia one yard line. Sam, a clap of the hands, has the snap, turns, looks, leans for the goal line. Sam, is he across? He is. Touchdown, Texas. Sam Ellinger, his third touchdown of the night. And the Texas Longhorns beat the fifth ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Let me help you. Let me help you. Look at that. We went from five and seven to Sugar Bowl champions, baby. This is all for y'all. You can't tell us what can be done. Hard work. Hard work always pays off and in. The most outstanding player is sophomore quarterback Sam Ellinger. Longhorn Nation. We're back! You guys have battled, and uh, at every turn, I tell everybody that'll listen, uh, this senior class uh, is one of the most influential uh, in the modern history of Texas football uh, because of uh, the culture that you have upheld because of the buy-in and your belief. You guys knew we were on the the verge of something special, and you learn how to be champions. And for that, uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this this is about you. Uh, it's not about me. It's not about your coaches. Uh, this is about you guys. Interesting. Note that the Texas players are not allowed to wear any Sugar Bowl gear inside Moncrief around the Texas football offices. They can't even say we yeah. referring to that team. They've got to refer to it as the 2018 team. <laughs> and I, I love it. I, I think it's great by the staff, and, and that's what it should be. But that was a fun atmosphere, fun game, and congrats yeah, to that team. Just has Bevo. He loved it. <laughs> Every time a vacation day interrupts a work day, a Corona gets its line. Every time your favorite getaway is a block away. Every time you find some friends and get lost. Every time a night takes you away and every time the last thing you want to do is leave, a Corona gets its line. I can't believe they charged me this much. I don't know what I'm going to do. Ah. <sighs> Go to CashNetUSA.com now. If approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Thanks. Who are you? I'm CashNetUSA.com. Man. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNetUSA. Every day is about pushing yourself further. Whether you, or, or. UT Health Austin Sports and Injury Clinic will keep you moving forward, keep you moving up to get you to the top. Because our team of professionals know that today is just tomorrow's time to beat. UT Health Austin, caring that makes a difference. Welcome back to the Orange White Spring Game presented by Living Spaces. Going into the second half, Team White with the 12 to 6 lead over Orange. So let's take a look at the game summary brought to you by Living Spaces. Lowell Galindo here with Ahmad Brooks. Oh, man. I know a lot of people are going to be picking apart what the number yeah. one offense was able to do. It's a good sign, though, to see the Texas defense really for once winning a scrimmage in this spring. And look, 
that Texas offense, they're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, but that's the question mark. It's defense. It's, it's can they replace what they've left? Can they find leadership? Can they find playmakers? And, and I, I thought this, this one offense has really won most cases in scrimmages throughout the spring. And what was positive about it is they were able to shore up the run. You saw, you saw them attack the football, create some takeaways. And I think the tackling was impressive to me because you know Tom Herman and his staff they want them to come out here you know they have two aggressive practices a week it's unlike really anything in, in college football and really throughout football and it's the norm around here to be able to tackle and uh, McCullough I thought made several good plays so you're getting a chance to see some of these young linebackers have an ability right who are going to be thrown into these roles to replace guys like Gary Johnson making plays that's good. Now, Sam Ellinger is going to be upset. He's not going to be happy about this, and this is going to this is going to have him pretty chapped throughout uh, the rest of, of offseason. However, at the end of the day, I think this really gives the defense the confidence they need, Lowell, to be able to, to come out here and say we performed well. So we got 20 more minutes of football until time for Ludacris. <laughs> Let's do we're it. outside over on the LBJ lawn. Yeah, so we're going to wrap up, coming up with the second half. In just a moment, you are watching the orange-white spring game. Presented by Living Spaces. <laughs> Is this right, Safe? Assembled it myself last night. I think I did an okay job. Just okay? What if something bad happens? We just moved in the next town. Just okay is not okay, especially when it comes to your network. AT&T is America's best wireless network according to America's biggest test. Now with 5G Evolution, the first step to 5G. More for your thing. That's our thing. Come on, let the good times roll. We're gonna stay here till we soothe our souls. If it takes all night long, we get in the groove and let the good times roll. We're gonna stay here till it soothes our souls. If it takes all The start of the Mike White era. That hit the free taco sign. That ball is smashed. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. And this is our game summary brought to you by Living Spaces. Sam Ellinger, 8 of 19, 41 yards through the air. No touchdowns, one interception to McCulloch. Coming off a 41 touchdown season, second most in school history. Only Colt with more. The white defense, the number one defense, holding Ellinger and company to 51 total yards, which is certainly a win. So Ellinger back out for more work. So is Whittington. Chris Brown is there assisting on the tackle. And we talked about Chris Brown being one of the emerging leaders of this Texas defense. It's replacing eight starters from a year ago. And, and I think you're going to have about six or seven guys once you arrange, uh, you know, the four or five up front. And, and you can, those are moving pieces for uh, Todd Orlando on this defense. He'll put in defensive backs. He'll put in linebackers. And Tom Harmon said, uh, he told us a few days ago, he said, we're going to find the best guys for those positions. We don't care what position they play. Back to Whittington. Wilbon nearly got him. And Jalen Green finishes the job. Yeah, tackling has been much better. And, and I'm, I've, I've been very impressed. Um, even last year, I thought at times where this Texas team, particularly in the Sugar Bowl, I, I mean, you know, they're tackling, they're tackling with power. You know, they're pushing people back, um, and they're they're hitting boys, and, and boys are, are dropping. You know, and so that's a good positive sign as as you have a third down here, and who knows what Todd Orlando will dial up. Yeah, Zach Ford says third downs are, are like Star Wars when it's against the Todd Orlando defense. Malcolm Epps breaking free into the secondary. Big boy going for 26. Earlier, he dropped one of these. Sam wanted to go to him. 
he's going to be, because of the position he plays, he's going to get a lot of single coverage on the backside towards the boundary. And he's got to be able to win that matchup, period. This time here, he comes underneath, he secures the catch, and has an excellent run after the catch, and, and had two or three guys have to bring him down. That's what you want to see from an emerging young wide receiver in Malcolm X, who's uh, Malcolm Epps, who's been one of the stars here uh, for spring ball. I mean, Colin Johnson told us that when he looks at Epps, it makes <laughs> him feel small. I mean, and Johnson's a big dude. He is. He's just a little bit smaller. I mean, you start to looking at their size, the difference here. I mean, you you're talking six, about 25 six, pounds. 45 to 25 six, six, pounds. 220. Taylor, what do you got on Malcolm? Well, guys, I was down here on the sideline during halftime, and Sam Ellinger actually spent a good bit of time with Malcolm Epps talking about what kind of adjustments they could make to help their connection. This is a duo that this team really expects a lot from. So the two of them were really talking about different matchups, different adjustments that they could make to find more success out here. And I also spent time with Sam yesterday after practice, and he told me the pass game is something he's really prioritizing. In fact, he barely ran at all during spring practice this week so this is something that they know they need to implement now and take with them into summer and fall Taylor thank you so much and with Colin he's told us that he's had to almost force himself to be more vocal yeah because he's looked around the receiving room and right now it's him and Duvernay because John Burt is running track Humphrey and Herter gone and they aren't vocal guys to begin with but they have had to force themselves with these young receivers to be more of that role. There's Whittington brought down by Chris Brown. Brown having some fun with that dance, but a seven yard gain by Jordan Whittington. That was a big time tackle. And, and, and great patience, great decision making there on their uh, RPO package from Sam Ellinger to get Whittington the ball in the right location. Second and short, Epps at the bottom of your screen. It's a handoff to Whittington. And Whittington brought down by Jalen Green. That's what's been most impressive. <laughs> He will run through tackles. Yeah, I mean, this kid has great, tremendous confidence and power. And, and he's a playmaker. He's going to make some plays uh, this year that are going to be top top 10 sports center type plays. You know, he uh, he can take at the distance. And this is, I believe, this is the threat that this Texas offense has been missing. And they compare him to little Jordan Humphrey with his football IQ and a guy that has tremendous versatility. So Tim Beck told us yesterday, Think of a way a guy can get a football, <laughs> and it's probably going to be what they do with Winnington. You know, the, the concern for me, Lowell, is going to be the timing of those touches. You know, you, you still want to make sure that Sam is conducting the show. You still want to know that Ingram is getting his touches and that Colin Johnson, and they've got so many weapons now. Now the, the problem will be, right, if there is one, who do you get the ball to and when? So the timing of those touches will be vital for me. Uh, but this is a young player that week one, like I said, he is going to impact the stat sheet. Now we know this from Herman's DNA as a coach, the quarterback is gonna run the football. Yeah. That's gonna happen. But from the jump, Herman has said the better production they can get with running the football from their running backs, the less that that quarterback, whoever it may be, is gonna have to run. So they can take off some of that workload from Ellinger. Because you talked about the touchdown percentage. Yeah. That is a blessing and a curse. Box. Yes, indeed. It shows you that he can do it, but it also is one of those things you don't want to be that reliant on one guy. It opens up the run for Sam. If, if these guys can run the football, there's less eyes on Sam Ellinger. 79% of the touchdowns were responsible for Sam Ellinger. He was the one that, that did it, either through the air or on the ground. And you look at Haskins, Murray, Tackle Viola, the Heisman finalists, they don't even come close. <laughs> you know, I, I, that, that to me is a phenomenal stat. And, 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 and it, it shows the greatness of Sam Ellinger, but it also shows um, the lack of other players around him being able to be producers of touchdowns, playmakers, period. How, just get the ball in the end zone. I don't care how you do it. And, and I, I think this year they're going to have some guys that are going to fit that mold and, and provide them some options where they just don't have to put that type of pressure on on their star quarterback. This is Chris Nagar. And wide right on the 37-yard attempt. So a nice drive by Sam Ellinger, Jordan Whittington, and the number one offense, but it comes up empty. Colin Johnson doing more coaching with Ellinger, coaching up the younger Malcolm Epps.
Let me guess, you left your wallet in your other pants. Yes, and I need to get some cash right away. I can't be late to the game. Do you have the Wells Fargo mobile app on your phone? Yes. You can use it to get a one-time access code to get cash at our ATMs. Oh, that's better. Thank you so much. You know the team needs me. Of course they do. No, seriously, they can't win without me. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. Pitching has been outstanding. A big strikeout for Henley. What a play! Dynamite performance. College football is more than a game. It's the bands, the cheerleaders, the announcers. It's uniquely American. That passion separates college football from every other sport in the United States. We got 40 minutes to go for the rest of our lives. There's four on it. Don't let them up. There goes David. He's all the way home. The team. The team. The team. The team. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. The first ever game, November 6th, 1869, Princeton and Rutgers. Wow. All season on ESPN, my story, personal testimonials, docu-series, the American game and the greatest. And on August 24th, we're going way early here with Florida and Miami, Manny Diaz, the Boy. new head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. Daniel Young with the carry. Trying to work the left side, Daniel Carson is able to bring him down after a two-yard carry. Now, this is somebody to be excited about. You're looking at Tyler Johnson, early enrollee, true freshman offensive tackle out of Conroe, Texas, the number 16 overall prospect in this freshman recruiting class, the highest-rated offensive signee for the Longhorns since Jonathan Gray in 2012. Yeah, things got to slow down for him first. But mm -hmm. I tell you what, man, he's got the specs. I think he's got the mindset, the mentality to really make something happen. And, you know, the one thing that when you watch him on film, for his size, you just gave his specs, he moves very fluidly. And when you can find big boys that move like that at the next level, they are a precious commodity. And so I, I think here right now, if I'm him, I started to get in the back pocket of some of these older offensive linemen. You start watching film. You start training with them. You start asking even guys like Malcolm Roach, hey, what are, where are my weaknesses? Where yeah. do you attack? That's how you get better uh, faster. You just humble yourself. But no doubt about it, this kid is going, he, he's going to be a playmaker around here. Coaches have told us he's a nice kid, but he's tough. <laughs> he's to hang out with Shackelford a little bit more, and he'll <laughs> create that edge. Intended receiver there was Reese Leto. Not sure tied in. Carson again with the pressure. So tight end is another spot. Haven't paid enough attention to this evening. But Andrew Beck is moving on. Had a really good pro day. So there's a shot for him at the next level. It's going to look like it's going to be the position manned by Kate Brewer, who's the most logical guy. More of a receiving threat. Yeah. than Beck, but his blocking has improved since he was just a pass-catch guy as his freshman year. They're going to need him. I mean, the tight end is a, a vital 
position here. And, and if you ask the staff, sometimes they'll tell you, depending on who that player is, it could be outside of the quarterback, one of the most important because of the way that they use them. Mm -hmm. And they try to create mismatches, whether that's line them up in the backfield, be a lead blocker, um, spread them out, where they can now take advantage of a safety or a linebacker or a nickelback in coverage. But he's a piece that they like to move all around the field. And so uh, if you're Cade Brewer, now is your opportunity. In your junior season, you played some his freshman year. Uh, Got over right up the, from the road, Indeed. And, and this is your year, and, and you know this is now your room, and um, you've got to make you've got to make a case that um, you can you can handle the pressure and you can handle all that comes along with being the tight end here for this offense. So it was a slow go getting back for the torn ACL that he suffered at the end of his freshman season. But overall, he was able to get in later in the year, hauled in a couple of catches, and we know what he can do when healthy. It's staying healthy and putting it all together that will be key for K. Brewer. And we know about that tight end spot around here. I mean, you look at the best, Jermichael Friendly, David Thomas, Pat Fitzgerald, all their quarterbacks. That was a security blanket for them. It means so much to a quarterback. Well, it's the closest threat to them typically. You, you know, you're either, you're either an H-back where you're right off the tackles, rear end or you're, you're somewhere in the slot and it's just a, it's a safety net and um, if you can find a player that can work in the middle of the field and, and catch the football and be reliable it, it's it's a it's certainly a plus Kirk Johnson with the carry and this is now Casey Thompson working quarterback with the orange offense and Johnson coming off don't want to see this. He's holding his wrist, and we can only hope that this is a minor injury for Kirk Johnson. And one of the main objectives for for Tom Herman, stay healthy. And and you know, and he he was he was very honest with us, despite several of the key injuries not coming from from practice or from contact, I should say. They, they did. This is a Texas team that did suffer some injuries throughout spring ball. It allowed other people to get reps, but. You know, you just don't want to see guys get hurt. Nice pass to Moore from Thompson, tripped up by Jamison, but especially with Kirk Johnson. This is his first spring game. He is finally healthy. Colin Johnson has been anticipating playing with his brother at the same time from the moment he arrived here on the 40 acres. He's getting checked out on the sideline right now. We just want Kirk Johnson to be okay, to experience that, that senior year and stay healthy, stay upright. I think every Texas fan watching right now is feeling the same way. Third and five for Thompson. Going up against the number one Texas defense. Epps, what really good defense by Jalen Green. He's been all over the place. Yeah. He'll get his nose in. Look, but if you're Malcolm X, Epps, this is what you want to do. Listen to me, man. I don't care if somebody's blanketed all over you and they're draped all over you. Catch the football. He missed one of those earlier. If he can become that guy right there for them, that was excellent coverage. Yes, you're right. But when you've got a guy this size, excellent coverage can still get beat by a guy who's just got those. He, he's, you know, he's like a, a dinosaur out there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 his, his catch radius is phenomenal. If he can make a name for himself doing that, this young man is going to develop very quickly, and he's going to be a playmaker for this Texas team early and often. Good pressure in the backfield by Jamari Chisholm. Junior college defensive lineman. Third year Juco player from NEO A&M that could end up being a factor on the defensive line. As he's in there with Taquan Graham and DeAndre Coburn, big old number 99 in the middle. You know, Texas has been fantastic there in two straight years with Puna Ford. Chris Nelson quietly was a force inside. Gerald Wilbon has played well in spelling Chris Nelson, but now it's him and Coburn in the middle. Second and 11. There's Whittington. McCulloch, open field, can't get him. And man, that is some acceleration from the true freshman, Jordan Whittington. Acceleration, the power. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's Jeffrey McCulloch, who he just shrugged off. You know, that's what appears to be perhaps the starting middle linebacker. I mean, and it's the, the, the arm, the, the power. That's what I was saying earlier about him being able to run through contact uh, for as young as he is. I mean, this kid is should be getting ready for, for high school prom. There are a lot of proms going around right now in the city of Boston. <laughs> and he's out here playing with some, some grown men. Bounces it to the left side. Chris Brown, what do you got? 
Chris Brown not backing down with another first down run from the freshman from Quero, Texas. I like the aggression. Yeah, I, he's a playmaker, uh, great blocking up front, does a nice job of shuffling those feet, being very swift-footed, getting outside, uh, finding some space. Jordy Whittington, remember the name. This young player here is, uh, he's going to be a force to reckon with here very shortly. Thompson going through the progressions, eluding pressure. McCulloch is there, Osai there as well. Short game. I like this though. Rod C, what Thompson can get you against the first team defense because when he enters games, this could be the type of scenario, the type of defense that he is facing. Well, put the talent around him too and, and, and give him an opportunity. You know, he's, he's out there also with, 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 with the offensive line and that's gonna help him, his confidence as well. 10 more minutes in this 2019 Texas spring game. Yep, fourth quarter indeed. It's coming up right after the break. The University of Texas Golf Club, your home in the Hill Country. It's a member experience as big as Texas. Major champions, tour pros, and you can stroll the 18 holes. Play the Speed Lower 40, a fun six hole short course. Hit the courts in the biggest indoor tennis facility in Austin. Host your next event in our pavilion or clubhouse. The next time you're in Austin, stay and play in our casitas. The University of Texas Golf Club was founded by Longhorns for Longhorns. The start of the Mike White era. Texas is broken this game wide open. That hit the free taco sign up ball was smashed. The eyes of Texas are upon Longhorn Extra this week. I promised myself when I stepped on campus I'll do everything I can to help win a Big 12 championship or a national championship. Sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting the ball, I feel his presence. Go beyond the 40 acres for the stories you need to hear about the people who make Texas great. I know this is not going to stand forever. I have to keep working and I have to try to go faster and get better. Longhorn Extra this week, Thursday at 8 on LHN. Pitching has been outstanding. A big strikeout for Henley. What a play! Dynamite performance. Order the 2019 spring game. Team White up on Team Orange, 12 to six. And we have seen Casey Thompson engineer a solid drive here, working with the number one offense, going up against the heart of this Texas defense. The starters who are still out there, defensive unit that lost eight starters from a year ago, only eight returning starters for this entire Texas team, tied with UAB and Navy for the fewest returning starters in the Bulls subdivision. Whittington has been huge on this drive. Swing pass gets it into the red zone. Deshaun Jameson there to force him out. Those are the types of plays you want to see him. You, you want to put him in space. Just a simple swing pass. No, don't do anything too complicated. Let the kids skill set win you some yardage, win some ball games, and it's a simple pass. And then also what it also does for the quarterback is it's it's a it's a rhythm throw, right? It gets you in rhythm. And who knows um, when this kid really starts to develop and get in come of his own here. Uh, those are the types of plays that Texas fans are going to hold their breath on when he touches the football. Third and four. Empty backfield for Thompson. Looking right side to Daniel Young. Coaches will tell you he's really improved his receiving in this spring. Did not see it there. And that's going to bring up a fourth and four. Thompson is staying out. Daniel Young had a very good freshman season. It was up and down last season as a sophomore. A lot of the issues for Young, ball security, two lost fumbles, and this was a team 
They'd only lost six fumbles all of last season. Ninth best in the bowl subdivision. Only 11 turnovers last year, which was fourth best in the bowl subdivision. Low snap. Thompson leaves it short, but it looks like Epps, no. He put his paws on it, but did not control the catch. It was out of bounds. It's a good battle. Was there, yeah. Good battle, and they came in together. So these guys are used to working against each other, and, uh, and I, I really like this. Is, this is what I'm saying. If he can continue to just get this type of confidence here, you know, and your quarterback can rely on you to, to body guys up, and it's great hand and eye coordination. Yeah. If he could just stay in bounds there, but those are plays that as he gets older, he'll continue to make. And Jalen Green, I'll tell you what, man, I haven't seen him out of place not one time tonight. And we've seen him uh, come up and, and strike some blows on some guys on the outside edge and on the perimeter. Uh, two young players that, that Texas fans need to get familiar with uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Here's another one, Roshan Johnson from Port Neches. Also an early enrollee. He is the number two dual threat quarterback and this incoming freshman class, the highest rated quarterback signee for Texas since Garrett Gilbert. Yes, even more highly thought of by the recruiting pundits than Sam Ellinger. Johnson has been a little overwhelmed at times, and this is first spring camp. This will be a good taste of reality for Johnson. Blitz on the first play. Gives it up to Jarrett Smith. Let's go down to the sidelines. Taylor Davis with a very special guest. A very special guest indeed. Quarterback Sam Ellinger is with me now. Sam, you are coming off a record season. 41 touchdowns, Sugar Bowl MVP. What has allowed you to get your game to this level? I would say just the tremendous coaching and um, the relationships that I have with guys on the team. Um, I always know where my receivers are going to be up front. I trust them, and they've, we've, we've done an excellent job of continuing to progress throughout every game and every week um, in this system just because of how good our coaching is. Now, I had some time with you yesterday after practice. You told me your passing game is a high priority of yours right now, even over your run game, even though we know you're very comfortable running. Why is the pass game such a priority for you and for this offense this year? I would say just because of uh, the amount of athletes we have in that receiver room, um, you get the ball in those guys' hands, and they're going to make a play. They're going to they're going to put points on the board for us. So um, just just understanding what we have in our arsenal and getting the ball to them so they can go make plays. Now this team lost some impact players, but like we're seeing today, there's a lot of talented youth that are stepping up for you guys. You've been able to stand out here and watch some. Of it. What are you seeing from those guys? Just just what we've been seeing all spring. Um, the, the younger recruiting classes have been nothing more than excellent. Um, and it's, it's been really fun to watch just how athletic they really are. And so for them to come out here and play well, it's good to see. I'm happy for them. And they're, we're, we're going to go into summer knowing, knowing what they can do and making sure they get better. All right. Well, we're looking forward to another great season from you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Now we saw some of that upside with the youngster and Brew McCoy that Sam Ellinger was alluding to. I know that pass was short of the first down, but he muscled that football, willed it for a catch. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's a great athlete, and uh, there's no question about it. He's one of those types of players. If you have him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, um, it, it's typically going to be favorable for your team. And, and he's such a competitor, you know, when the ball's in the air. It, that's that's what made little Jordan Humphrey so great. Yeah. You know, the play at Texas Tech, I mean, he just flat out pulled the ball away from the kids, you know? And Brew McCoy has a little bit of that. He's not as tall, but he's 6'3". He's got, he certainly has the size and the leaping abilities, the athleticism. And this is what I really love right here. He's a humble kid. He's learning here from um, the senior here who's now um, shedding some light, giving some information. You see him, he's locked in. And, I, and that's what I, as a, as, a, as, a, as a player who's gone to Texas, I know how valuable that is. It, to get the information from the guy in front of you, uh, boy, does it help you really develop and accelerate your game a lot faster. Colin Johnson says Brew McCoy is one of the smartest freshmen he's been around in terms of the football IQ. Simply gets it and wants to know as much as he can. Now, I know in, in this scenario, the offense has struggled. But to me, from seeing the pieces that they've put together, knowing Ellinger is back at quarterback, Texas fans should be excited about what this offense could do. I, I don't think it's as much of a concern because, you know, if you listen and you follow what has happened throughout the spring, the offense, like I said earlier, has really gotten 
Uh, they, they've taken advantage of the defense. And, and, it's, and this is a defense that's continuing to grow. But this is what's positive. And, and, and I think the mistakes that were made on the offensive side are all correctable. And, but this is going to be one of the more high-powered offenses, in my opinion, in the Big 12. And if you are in the Big 12, you're going to be in the country. Um, and it's going to be led by number 11, who we just saw, who we just heard from, Sam Ellinger. And now he's got some pieces around him that I think are going to really help him really help him be even a better football player. And, I mean, these numbers from the sophomore season are, are they're incredible. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, you start to compare some of the greats, and, I mean, that's big time. <laughs> okay? And, you know, and those five interceptions, you know, and he had, what, two or three of those in the latter part of the year. But for that, the stretch during the year, Sam Ellinger was, I mean, he was, he was on fire. When you consider that that was the biggest issue with him as a freshman. Indeed. The ill-time turnovers. Very true. And the Cleaned more critical the game, the more critical the moment Ellinger was at his best. And the way it started, too, keep in mind, after the week one loss against Maryland, I mean, the game ended on multiple Ellinger turnovers as Thompson goes full throttle, which led a lot of us to point to last season yep. and say, okay, Ellinger is having these same sort of issues. Can he be the guy? And he answered that in a major way. Well, the players even said it. They, they said he's just so cool, calm, and collected. And that's what you want to hear when you talk about your quarterback and you hear about when you talk about your leader. And the way he handled adversity early on and then really cleaned up those mistakes and then went on that hot streak that he did and, you know, really set uh, the Big 12 on fire. I, I, I believe that his leadership skills are the best part of his game. The second best part is his competitive nature. I mean, the dude, all you got to do is watch the Georgia game. His determination at the end of that ball game to not let his team lose, oh, yeah. it was clear. Sam Ellinger was not going to lose, and the more that he can play like that. Well, that the entire game, he carried the team yep. on his shoulders. And we've talked about this so, so in depth over the past few seasons when Texas has struggled. Texas is at its best when they have an elite quarterback. Not just a good, serviceable quarterback, but all the great Texas teams yeah. have been because of a difference maker at quarterback. And he fits that mold, you know, and just based on his skill set, I think the way he improved as a passer, and I think his emphasis on becoming a better passer this year is, is, is they go, again, you know, Coming up, making plays, Jalen Green, the young cornerback, making a difference out there um, this evening. And, you know, with Sam, I, what, like I said, you want to win your guys over in the locker room. Man for man in that locker room, you go to them and you ask him, do you respect Sam Ellinger? Here's what Tom Harmon said. He said, they respect him because he's tough. The yeah. kid is, I mean, I mean, you saw him just take a lick and keep on ticking time and time and time and time again. And that's Tom Harmon's type of guy, you know? And, um, and when you do that every day, guess what? Your team's going to follow you. Guess what? You're going to win ball games. And so I love his mindset. I know he didn't come out here and have the best day today, but I think when you start to look at some of the best players in the country, low, you've got to throw this young man's name in the mix uh, to start the season. And this is the spring game. This oh, yeah. should count for zero. Absolutely. What it actually well, for him, it means truly you means. want to come out well, here and yeah. perform well. And especially but in when terms you of spring. projecting indeed, indeed, indeed. to next season, this has no bearing. Well, I mean, look where he's at. I mean, look where he's at. He's out on the field next to Tom Herman. Yeah. I mean, all the other starters, you know, got the pads off. And maybe they're not allowed to be there. But the fact <laughs> yeah. that yeah. what I'm saying here is he's still out there trying to get mental reps. He's still trying to find out what's called, whatever he call is. How can he help? And, and you, want, you want a guy like that that's the first to show up, the last to leave. And like I said, that leads by example. I, I thought our team did an excellent job on just kind of capturing his personality. He, he, he's molded a lot of his leadership ability after Colt McCoy, um, a very strong presence, guys that you knew were the, the moral compass of the team. And it's hard to say it's hard to say that this young man isn't destined to do great things here. And, and you'd like to think that at some point he's going to call himself a champion. Well, Ellinger, the coaches describe him as an extra offensive coordinator on the field. He sees things that not even the coaches are seeing when it comes to the checks that he makes at the line. Rush touchdowns, 16. Not even V1 had that many. 41 touchdowns total. Colt had that record. Well, still does, and that's the only one that's had more. Passing yards, again, 3,292. Most since 09. Wins most since 09. So you're looking at McCoy and Young type numbers. <laughs> Phenomenal season 
phenomenal season. What's the biggest question mark for this Texas offense? Well, I, I think it's helping him. And, and, I, and I'll continue to say that Sam Ellinger needs relief. You, you just can't expect him to have that type of season again. Though, I, and I asked Tom Herman, I said, does the kid have more in the bank? He said, well, I guess he does. And, but, you know, that was, that was good enough last year to get them 10 wins, and they could have easily won 11 games. And so I think when you start to look at it, you just need relief around him. You need, you need him to be able to be a player that you need in clutch situations, right? When the game's on the line, you know number 11 is going to be the player that you expect he is and that he's going to make a play to carry his team over the top and lead them to victory. And he should be the guy in the Big 12. Will be the top returner in terms of QBR. And this could be the season where Sam Ellinger is a Heisman front runner out of the Big 12. Yeah. Well, Jalen's right there, you know, up the road and, you know, at, at our at Yeah, the it's, arch it's tough not to consider a program there. that's won back-to-back -back Heisman. True. But in terms of numbers, and I, and I think, I don't think anybody in this conference has, you know, came off with a big of win, a big performance as he did following Georgia. So, yeah, he's in the mix. And, look, his team will have to alleviate some of that pressure from him. And you don't want to just throw all that on him. And Sam was a guy that grew up here. Listen, he wants to win that award. You think he's not listening? You think he's not paying attention? Of course he is. This kid has been sitting in the stadium since he was three and four years old, dreaming of this moment and this opportunity. So, but you can't make it about you. I, I played with Ricky Williams, who won a, a Heisman here. And despite our team not being great, you know, we've won enough games to help him get there. Yeah. And the reality of it is, is for Sam Ellinger, the pieces around him also have to play well, and, and things have to fall in Texas, in Texas, uh, you know, favor in order for, for that to happen. So a third down here for the true freshman. Early enrollee, Roshan Johnson. Tom Herman going after those athletic quarterbacks. He has three of them between Ellinger, Thompson, and Johnson. Johnson is a well-built young man, ahead of the curve in terms of physical maturity for a freshman, overthrown there to Leto. And that's it. The spring game is coming to an end because Tom Herman says so. Team White takes down Team Orange 12 to 6, but ultimately doesn't truly matter until what we see from this team next season in the opener against Louisiana Tech. Network is presented by Living Spaces. Buy it today, enjoy it tonight. And in part by Nissan, proud sponsor of the Texas Longhorns, Hook'em Horns. So here are some of the highlights of the 2019 schedule. Louisiana Tech is going to be the opener. And LSU coming to town in week two. Bayou Bengals also coming off a 10-win season. And after that, Oklahoma on October 12th. And who knows, could be talking about one of those late season games at Iowa State. Brock Purdy coming back for another year for the Cyclones. One of those games, it could be a pivotal matchup in terms of Texas getting into the Big 12 title game. But that's going to be the expectation. Let's face it. With everything Texas was able to do in year number two under Tom Herman, first and foremost, developing Sam Ellinger, having him come into this year as one of the Heisman front runners, it is going to be Big 12 championship game or bust at the least for this Texas team. What I love, though, is the players now, that's what they're expecting. Mm -hmm. and, and that was what was missing here because they hadn't, they hadn't had that taste of what it feels like to be one of the best teams. And what it also does for me, I thought it was an awesome experience last year that our conference allows us to be able to, to play your arch rivals again. Uh, there, that was an intense moment. I drove up to the AT&T Stadium to be able to be a part of that game. If you're these Texas players and you, you have the, the possibility of playing Oklahoma again, who could be a very good team as well again this year, 
Um, it's great, but to be able to do that, like I said, what they're going to have to do is find confidence. They're going to have to believe they can do that. The players are starting to expect that now in Lola, and that's what I love more than anything about what, is, what has happened since that Sugar Bowl and them having a Big 12 appearance is that now they believe. Now they believe they can actually do it. A lot of belief in Todd Orlando that this Texas defense can be even more explosive than the first two defenses that he's had wow. in terms of plays in the backfield when they get interceptions. He thinks more of them can be taken to the house. Wow. And what we saw was a very dominant performance by the number one defense that's breaking in an entire new defensive line and two starting corners. No question about it. There's athletes out there. Time now for the eyes of Texas. Coming up, Alex Lowe and Texas game day final.